this cover piece here has never really sat very nicely on here, it sort of wobbles around a bit. And with just a slight bit of force backwards, it slips, <laughs> slips off the front lip there very easily. So as a first step to trying to make this watertight around here, I'm going to remove uh, probably some material from the inside there and most of this uh, plate that's been left there. It's very shallow here at some points, so I think that's not helping too much. So I trimmed away all this uh, shelf from around the outside, except for this bit here that I want to keep. And wouldn't you know it, it fits really, really nicely now. At the rear of the hatch there, it doesn't have this lip like the other three sides have along here. And there's actually a fairly big gap there that bows out like that on the uh, on the hull side. So what I'm going to do to close that off is just glue a piece of wood in there like that and then use the belt sander to shape it. Almost all of it wasn't even touching. All the way down here and all the way down here, it's not touching. So I'm just going to fill in these low spots and do that all over again. Uh, as it turns out, the whole area from here all the way around to here wasn't even touching except for just a tiny little bit there. And I mean, it's probably all right not to worry about that, but if you look at this bit at the back here where it was touching all the way down, it's so nice that I just want to have the whole thing like that. Just thought I might share some tips for doing these epoxy mixes. This is the stuff that I'm using. Um, you can get this from Burns Co. here in New Zealand. Uh, and it's a 5 to 1 ratio mix, so you want 5 parts of this and 1 part of this. In other words, this is going to be 1 sixth of the total and this is going to be 5 sixths of the total. And what I used to do is put this in first because I've gotten used to this number is how much I need. So for example, if I'm doing this, what I'm about to do now, I'm probably going to need 30 grams to fill in that uh, gap there. Um, so I'll put in 30 grams of this and then I'll divide that by 5 and add it. So 30 divided by 5 is 6, so I need 6 grams of that and the total will be 36 grams. So when I'm pouring it, I'm looking for 30 grams on here and then I'm looking for 36 grams here. And that works fine, but um, recently I've been doing it the other way around and putting in this first and then multiplying it by 6, which I find a little bit easier to do in my head. Now, if you have a calculator handy, it doesn't matter, but usually I don't. So, yeah, easier to multiply this number in my head by 6 to get the second number that I'm going to be looking for when I'm pouring this one. And uh, another reason to do that is that if you make a mistake, so let's say you put in half a gram too much, half a gram more for 6 grams is 6.5 grams, and it's a larger error overall percentage-wise, than it would be if you put in half a gram too much when you're pouring the larger quantity. So 30.5 grams is not so much of a error percentage-wise. So I find it 
a little bit more comforting in that respect. Um, and the other reason is that this stuff is a little bit more watery in texture than the resin, which is like a very, very thin honey. And you can pour this one very, very slowly so that the stream thins down. It gets very, very thin, maybe less than a millimeter in thickness even, um, before it starts to go drop, drop, drop. Whereas this one will go drop, drop, drop quite quickly. The stream breaks, I mean. Um, yeah, so when I'm doing this one, like the final amount, I find it easier to match the desired amount with this one than I would with this one. Another tip is to weigh this thing before you start. Even though you don't really need to know how much that weighs, it can be handy to know because I was doing a job the other day and this scale turned off right in the middle of while I was pouring it. And I was quite surprised because to my knowledge this scale didn't, doesn't do that, at least I've never seen it do it before. And it has an on off button and the on off button turns it off again. Now if you contrast that with one of these ones, the on off button turns it on, but it doesn't turn it off, it just zeroes it again. And this one has a timer in it that after a minute or so it will turn off on its own. So for the, if you're using one of these, uh, you've got to keep touching it every now and then just to keep it alive, just so that that number changes a bit and then it will reset the timeout so it doesn't suddenly turn off on you. Um, I wouldn't recommend using one of these really though because it doesn't do tenths of grams like this one does. See, that will do tenths of grams there, which is very nice. Um, but anyway, it turns out that maybe this one does turn off after a while. Um, yeah, so in the middle of a pour it just went like that and I was like, oh shit. But if I had known what this weighed before I started, it wouldn't matter because I could just subtract that from the weight to know how much resin I'd put in and get a number for what my final number should be. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that can be very handy. So every time I do a mix in future, I'm just going to weigh that empty before I start. And last tip is, I guess this only applies if you live in New Zealand, but if you can get these things from Pack and Save, or maybe other supermarkets too, these are really great for mixing. These have be become my, my favorite mixing containers at the moment. I'm not, not too partial to this uh, potato and gravy stuff, but I'll buy it to get one of these every now and then. And the reason why these are great is that they're made from the same non-stick surface as the mixing cups that you can get from the fiberglass shop and stuff. Uh, they don't have markings on them for mixing, but if you're using scales, then it doesn't really matter anyway. But one of the really nice things about these is that they have this nice curved edge on the corner, which fits perfectly if you're mixing with a stick like that. These are the popsicle sticks that I use. You can buy these by the 500s from Bunnings and stuff. But this will fit perfectly in that corner there. Well, there's, there's no corner, right? It's just a curve. But the point is that you don't get any resin or mix in there that you can't access. You just slide this along and every last bit of the mix will come up so you can stir it and get it uh, get it properly mixed. And also the next day when it comes time to pull the rest of it out that you didn't use, it comes out a lot easier because that curve is nice and smooth radius instead of having a sharp corner which um, uh, tends to leave a little bit of the unmixed epoxy like still watery kind of resin gets stuck in there if you have a sharp corner because the resin didn't get mixed with the hardener quite well. Anyway, that's <laughs> those are my tips for now. Hope that will help somebody. So 7.6 times 6. 6 is 42 plus 3.6 is 45.6, right? What did I tell you? It's easier when you do it that way. See, I just pulled this out and it's perfectly dry all around this corner, which means that all the resin got mixed in the right ratio. And it's easier to pull out of the pot too, so you can often pull it out all in one piece like this, even if there's only a paper thin bit of resin in there. Whereas if you use one of these, you'll almost always find that there's a little bit of wet resin in here that didn't get quite mixed, even if you're, you know, trying to scoop around it like that when you're stirring, you can't always get it, and uh, it makes it harder to pull the remainder out too, because it sticks in there because of that wetness. Still about half of this side's not touching, and a little bit, just a little bit there.
That's a fair bit of water for just a few minutes of hose squirting. But I don't think it's coming in around here. The only wet parts on this shelf were just along the back here, strangely, which I didn't really spray much. So I think it must be getting in the, in the holes on the top of the cover where the screws are holding it down. Oh, come on. Really? I mean... No, not good enough. That's better. It's actually not touching the bottom of the bath. Because if I push it down I can feel it touch the bottom, so... It's floating. And it will tip one way or the other. Yeah. Alright, well... I was planning to make a fairly tall superstructure, make it look like one of those luxury yachts or sport fishing boats or something. Was planning only to make it about this high, but um, oh well, just make it that high. <laughs> yep, that was only a matter of time, wasn't it? Uh, I bet you're thinking you knew that was going to happen at some point, but you'll never guess how it happened. I was holding the transmitter, I charged the battery up so it's a fully charged 4S now, and I picked this up to just give it a little try, make sure everything was working, and there was a weevil. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not do it again, jeez. There was a weevil sitting there just under where my thumb is. An evil weevil, I think. Because when I blew on it, like this, to get him to go off. Oh, he's still there! What the f... Evil! That's what that is, pure evil. So I thought, well, he didn't get off when I blew him. So I'll just flick him off like that, you know? So I grabbed the transmitter very tightly with both hands, because I'd feel very stupid if I tried to flick it and I let the transmitter go. But what happened was the inertia of my flick flicked the throttle up all the way up to full. The boat shot up here, rode all the way up onto there and knocked over my soup cans. And then slid back down here and half the bathtub came out on the floor. So anyway, have a good laugh. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that. It's nice and soft at least. I think if this got into the jet pump, it would pretty much just chew straight through it, but there's going to be a lot of it. That's the only problem. Let's try half throttle. Okay. It's about 45% throttle. Let's try a little bit of full throttle. Oh. So full throttle again. Nah, uh, it doesn't really... Uh, I think it's, uh, the intake's probably clogged, that's what's happening. <sighs> oh no. It's full throttle. Oh shit, yeah, look at that. It's not gonna work, is it? Uh, well, that's a pity. It's really annoying that this, uh, uh, it's not algae actually, it's a fern, I was told. Azola. It's really annoying that it chose this last few weeks to really start exploding in growth. Because about a month ago there was almost none of it here. Okay, how about this pond then? This is not actually on the farm that I live on, this is on the neighbouring property, but the farmer said it was okay to come over here. And there's none of that horrible Azola fern. There is sort of grassy stuff, but it's much more wispy and thin, and it's not as buoyant. Like, it's not sitting on the surface to get in the way of the intake grate. It's mostly just sort of rooted down into the ground, so hopefully I can just sort of swish across the top of it and pull through enough water to keep going. Okay, another change of plans. There's another pond over there on the same property that I can get to by driving, provided my car can get there. Um, and the farmer said he wasn't sure if a uh, regular car, four-wheel drive or not, uh, would be able to get down there. This road here, obviously, still pretty good. But <laughs> we shall see. But if I can get to where I think I can get, that'll mean that I can I'll only need to carry the boat over about 200 meters of flat ground versus 800 meters of hills 
plus I'll have a fence at my back to keep the bulls away from me while I'm playing with my boat which would be much nicer anyway see how far we can get towards the other pond oh and hopefully there's no pond weed on that one okay so there was a little bit of hill there but not much it's quite nice here actually it's uh, as I'm looking around the only traces of civilization to be seen are the fences and that house or shed or whatever it is up there and that's it and this car of course oh and that <laughs> oh it's pretty clean yeah looks like there is actually that uh, fern in here as well but because this pond is so much more exposed to the wind than the one next to my house uh, never really gets a chance to build up It's just under half throttle. Oh. All right, this is going to be full throttle. can't steer it when the power's off, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of it now. you got to drop the throttle to almost nothing, and then hard right or hard left on the uh, steering stick. Uh, three quarters throttle. Oh no 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 no! See, see. Uh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, come on. Look at that, we just drove over the fern there for like barely one meter, barely half a second. Well, I'm really going to have to watch out for that. The other problem with this I found is that it clogs up the um, this pipe here. So by the end of yesterday's run on that mucky pond next to my house, that actually wasn't working. The cooling water wasn't flowing through that pipe and I had to blow through it, fill, up a mouth, fill my mouth full of water blow water down through here to get it cleared again so I want to get as much of this out of here as I can it would be nice to have a, bit, a little bit of res reverse throttle available wouldn't it Uh, uh, uh. See, I forgot to keep a little bit of throttle on there to turn. This is just on half throttle. So that jet pump was totally worth it, I'd say. A little bit pricey, but it does the job. So at this speed here, looks like I can just slam the rudder to the side and it won't have any risk of spinning out. This is basically full rudder, or oh, not quite.
Yeah, that doesn't seem very efficient actually, full throttle. Seems like that 50%, 40 to 50% is really good, but full throttle's not. It doesn't scale up linearly, I mean. See, right about here, yeah, 50% throttle. We're getting pretty nice speed. It doesn't bounce up and down and slap on the water so much. And we're probably using slightly less than half the power. And it's a lot easier to turn and control. <laughs> oh. I can hear it beeping now actually. So, lipo tester is beeping. That'll be the end of today's run. Um, I wasn't actually sure that I was going to make it here. Like I said when I was driving over, I, I just bought this boat just in case I made it, so I uh, wasn't as prepared as I should have been. I didn't have any more batteries. So that was a pretty good run. The um, motor in the ESC is stone cold, so uh, the weak link in this setup seems to be the battery, which is fairly warm, although I, I don't think it's much warmer than it has gotten from flying my big hexacopter, so it's probably nothing that it hasn't seen before. Uh, it's just that I wouldn't want to get, you know, too much, uh, spend too much more time getting hot, hotter than that. Uh, speaking of time, yeah, I thought I'd get probably a little bit more time out of it, but I was hitting the throttle pretty hard most of the way. We didn't get any water inside here, apart from just a few drops there, but that could well have been from just when I took the lid off, because you always get a little bit around here, and it's very hard to take the top off without dripping into here, and about that much could be just from that. Okay, this is a current test on 3S. Half throttle 30 amps. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> so full throttle said OL, which means that it's over 100 amps. Actually, we can only get to about three quarters throttle before it's at 90 amps already. So yesterday I was probably pushing it way over 100 amps with the 4S battery. I didn't think it would be that high. Because you know, at, at quarter throttle it was only like 6 amps. Yeah, like 7 amps at quarter throttle. It really like ramps up at a sharp rate as you get higher not at all linear. Alright, so that's half throttle. Ah, uh, that sucks. It's right on the hump, I think. So this is 30 amps. And I don't think it's quite on plane, really, is it? That's not bad. Let's bump it up a little bit more. So this is probably 35 amps. It's not bad. Okay, that's not a bad cruise. I mean, yeah, it's probably closer to 30 amps actually. Let's bump it up a little bit more. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So I'd say somewhere between 30 and 40 amps for this on 3S. I'm just looking for what would be a, a comfortable cruise that's not too slow if you were doing like a long distance uh, mission or something, say if you had Argy Pilot on it, and yet something that's not going to break the battery. The reason I'm so concerned about that is I'm thinking I might try building a lithium ion pack for this. Um, I'm just wondering how many cells I'm going to have to put in parallel to make it strong enough 
so that it's not going to burn up. Well, that's pretty nice. Yeah, just over half throttle. Let's try a bit of full throttle 3S. Amazingly, that seemed about the same as the 4S. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if going to 6S would make a whole lot of difference, to be honest. Because when I was looking at the specs on the website for the seller of this, they claimed 5 kilo thrust on 3S, 7.5 kilo thrust on 6S, so for twice the voltage, and presumably a whole lot more current, and therefore a whole lot more power, you're not really getting a whole lot more thrust. That's full rudder. Let's do a bit of full throttle. But I don't want to hold it there, you know. Damn it! Half a second is all that took. Well, there's not even a single drop of water in there today. That's good. So with the these two 3S batteries, pretty warm. Yeah, a little bit warm. I wasn't really doing any full throttle runs much, just uh, cruising around at about half throttle or slightly above. And got somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, which is about what you would expect from that current and this capacity of battery. Okay, let's see what we get with 4S. Two amps for like a minimum limp home speed. And then half throttle is 48 amps for half throttle versus around 30 for 3S. So it's quite a difference in power, but I wasn't really noticing a whole lot of difference in performance. I'll, I'll let it go up to 90 amps and see what throttle that is. Oh my goodness, 76, 76 amps at about 60% throttle. <laughs> I'll try for 90 again, but it sort of freaks me out when I'm doing it. So powerful! Okay. Uh, it's a bit hard to get it to 90 amps because it sort of jumps up to 100 very quickly and then this thing doesn't know what to do so um, yeah this one again I think we're gonna have to stay below three quarters throttle at least for like continuous running
Yeah, it is definitely more lively on 4S. <laughs> when you run 3S and then 4S straight afterwards, you, uh, you actually notice the difference. Steering seems to go funny. Oh, I can't steer to the right now. Ah, shit. I think one of the world's greatest knots has come undone. Oh, look what happened. See that? Supposed to be two screws in there. Just needed a little bit of Loctite, and I even bought some Loctite the other day too. I should have. Oh, that sucks. I don't think I can do anything more today then. Damn it, I had a half a battery left of my 4S too. This screw's going to come loose too. See, it's turning the screw. <laughs> okay, I think I better finish up this video here. It's getting a bit long. Uh, overall, I'm quite happy with how this is turning out. It seems to have plenty of power, but boy, you better have a battery that can handle it because this system is thirsty. So I can go up to 6S, but from what I've seen with the 3S and the 4S, that's plenty. And since I don't really have any batteries that can do the 6S very well, that's probably all I'm going to do, to be honest. Um, they quoted, actually, they quoted 3S, you need about 90, or what was it, 80 amps. And at 6S, you need about 120 amps, was what they had on their website. But with 3S, at least if my current meter is to be believed, we're already over 100 amps. So I would say that with the 4S, we're probably over the 120 amps as well. So with 6S, God, I don't know, <laughs> you'd need a, a pretty meaty battery to do that. Uh, but that's all fine, provided you have a battery, okay? So that's uh, that's working all right. Oh, this, uh, this worked quite well with the thing with the earplug in there. Didn't have any problems with that. I didn't use any of those little adjusty bits that I was going to use from the pull-pull system because it's just not, a, not enough space here. So I just tied it straight on there. I was worried that the aluminium might cut through the nylon here, but it's pretty hardy actually, especially this slightly thicker one that I've used and the only problem with this is that it's quite hard to tie knots in it. Um, I do know how to tie knots, <laughs> the, the, the proper ones, but I just couldn't, it just wasn't doing it for me so I've ended up with these really horrible ones. Does anybody know if there's a competition for the world's worst knot? Because I could probably do quite well in that. Anyway, it works fine. Um, the seal on the lid here worked great, so I'm glad I put the time into doing that. Uh, my original plan was to do that and then to also use some of that seal that you use for vacuum bagging, uh, sort of like chewing gum kind of stuff, because I did a test and I found that if you leave it in water for even just a couple of hours, it loses all the sticky from its surface, but it retains its soft, squishy, rubbery chewing gum sort of texture. So if you were to make one of those um, and then put it in here and stick the lid on, it wouldn't actually hold the lid down very well because it would lose its sticky, so you could still pull it off. But as long as it was being pressed down, it would seal the water out quite nicely. However, uh, after trying, trying it out just like this, I think the seal that I have is perfectly fine, so I'm not going to bother with anything else. And the reason it's perfectly fine is because when I put the lid on, there's only the thickness of the packing tape between this and the lid. So um, I tried tipping it over upside down in the bath as well, and it didn't really leak in at all like that either. So really happy with that. Took a while, but uh, it was worth it. So yeah. What else have we got to talk about? <laughs> oh, just thought I'd mention here. 
I can't believe how quickly one of these screws rusted. So I swapped. These are the ones that came with the kit, stainless, I guess. And uh, one, the couple down here weren't long enough, so I swapped them out for some other ones. But obviously, I'm going to have to get some stainless ones and do that properly because it's rusting after just about like less, probably less than an hour total time in the water. Um, yeah, everything else is fine. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Probably going to take this stuff off the back and do a bit of painting on this maybe, next step. Anyway, thanks for watching, um, see you in the next video.